proud member of the steering committee for the Right from the Start campaign. Um, I am pinching today for Marcella Bonacar, who was supposed to be our MC. So if I flub anything up a little bit, you'll forgive me uh, for a last minute switcheroo. We'd like to welcome state agency leaders, program directors, parents, and community members who joined us today. We have simultaneous Spanish English interpretation interpretation going on for this Zoom. Um, so thank you to Jessica, who is also proud to work um, in a child care center here in Rhode Island. So to get that interpretation, look at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar, and you can um, find the tab that looks like a little world globe, I think it is, and click on either English or Spanish. Um, and when someone is speaking in either of those languages, she will um, interpret in the other language. Um, we're here today to announce the 2021 state legislative and budget priorities of the Right from the Start campaign. This campaign is led by a great team of advocates in Rhode Island to advance policies for young children and their families here in Rhode Island. The Right from the Start is a legislative and budget campaign that was launched in 2020 to advocate for policy changes that will help ensure all young children and their families get off to the right start, regardless of race, ethnicity, immigration status, family structure, family income, or zip code. During the COVID-19 crisis, it has become even more clear that policies and programs that help families with young children are essential for a strong economy and public health. Investments now will help our state and Rhode Island's young children and families weather this crisis and emerge stronger on the other side. I'd like to briefly recognize the other members of the steering committee for the campaign. Khadija lewis Khan represents beautiful beginnings in Providence. Marcella Banneker represents Latino Policy Institute. Lisa Hildebrand with the Rhode Island Association for the Education of Young Children. Susan Dickstein with the Rhode Island Association for Infant Mental Health. Mary Barr with Rhode Island Head Start Association. And Leanne Barrett from Rhode Island Kids Count. So thank you all for being on today as well. Before we get started, I wanted to take a few minutes to recognize the many elected officials we have on our call today. Um, there's so many champions of issues important to children and their families, including the majority leaders of both the Senate, um, Leader McCaffrey, and the House, Leader Blazajewski, who are on with us today. We'll hear from them both in a minute, but I wanted to recognize the many others who are um, bill sponsors for the legislation and just all around champions. We have Representative Diaz joining us, Representative Kassar, um, we also have Senator Cano who will be speaking, um, Senator uh, Valverde, Senator DiMario, welcome and congratulations on your recent election. Um, and I think, oh, and Representative Marianne Shawcross-Smith. Hopefully I haven't left anyone out, um, but someone will message me. Oh, Senator Murray, how could I forget that Senator Murray? Welcome, Senator Murray. So um, with that, just making sure I didn't forget anybody else, um, with that, let me, uh, let me give brief introductory remarks for our majority leaders, uh, and then I'll turn it over to them. Um, first, Leader McCaffrey is a longtime member of this, the State Senate, representing District um, 29 in Warwick. He served as the chairman of the Senate Judiciary committee for 14 years before he was elected majority leader in 2017. Um, we know that he is wonderful with little children. He comes and does readings in our child care centers. We know he's a proud dad of four children and he certainly has lived many of these early years experiences that we're going to talk about today. And we are um, know him to be a very thoughtful leader who we really appreciate being with us today. Leader Blazajewski is starting his 11th year as a representative for District 2 in Providence, the Fox Point area, and is starting his first year as House Majority Leader after serving as Deputy Majority Whip since 2015. He has long championed many of the issues that we work on, including having sponsored legislation to improve family leave for many years. And he's the proud dad of two young children, so I know he understands firsthand the importance of quality early learning. So thank you both so much, and I'll turn it over to Leader McCaffrey. Thank you very much. It's an honor and a pleasure to uh, participate this afternoon in this event, and I would just like to uh, 
recognize the senators who are present here this afternoon. We have Chairwoman Cano, Senator Murray, Senator Valverde, and newly ele elected uh, Senator DeMario. Obviously, there are more members of the Senate who would love to be on, but because of constraints they have with their working lives, they can't be on. But certainly, success in high school, college, and in life begins at an early age, an early childhood. The experiences that you pick up in childhood lay the foundation for where you're going to be in the future, socially, emotionally, and in the business world. One study found that by the age of three, the children from families of the highest socioeconomic status had developed a much larger vocabulary than the parents of the lower economic social impact. The differences are strongly linked to the child's language accomplishments, which strongly correlate to the overall academic success of the children. <clears throat> Rhode Island may be small, but there still exists gender, race, and zip code divides. These divides become more evident during the COVID crisis, and the Senate is com committed to addressing these divides. Early learning is critical. Children who are not proficient readers by the end of the third grade oftentimes do not succeed in high school. Oftentimes these students end up in either the juvenile justice system or in the criminal justice system where they cost the state a lot of Rhode Island a lot more money. If the state had invested that money at an early age in childhood learning, those dividends would have paid great in the future. President Kennedy told us many years ago, our progress as a nation can be no swifter than our progress in education. The human mind is a fundamental resource. We must look at those words and see those words and say, those words still held true today. There is no more important investment that we can make than in education, and more importantly, in early childhood education. Quality education and quality child here lead to a better education in the future. As you know, the Senate over the last number of years has taken steps to address these, these programs and will continue to address these programs with the new chairwoman of the Education Committee who also has a child, so she knows some of the important things that we're discussing here. I know that in the future, the Senate looks forward to working with you and your organization and members of your collaborative and moving forward on these issues and again, I'd like to thank you for inviting me here and know that our door in the Senate is always open for input from you and legislation from you to address these important and critical issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leader. We will certainly be coming to your door and we appreciate your leadership. Uh, Leader Blazajewski. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and thank you all for being here today. I'd also like to start off by just recognizing the House members that are on, that are on this call, um, uh, Rep. Grace Diaz, who is just an absolute tremendous champion on children and families. Uh, we have a Rep. Shao Cross Smith, who's, who is, di despite the fact that this is her first few days of her term, this is her second term in the General Assembly, coming back after having previously served. So, welcome, Representative Shao Cross Smith and Representative Lyanna Kassar. Thank you so much for your advocacy and for being here today. Um, you know, it's important that we are here today to talk about how the General Assembly can continue to support Rhode Island's young children and families, particularly in this um, pandemic crisis. And um, as uh, Rachel said, I do know firsthand all too well about some of those realities, um, having uh, a six-year-old and, and a four-year-old, um, and my wife's a teacher, so we've been juggling uh, childcare and uh, school constantly trying to find their mask, which is always being lost. Um, I think everyone on this call could probably relate to that or as young children. Um, so, and, and dealing with the pandemic and all the realities that we've had to deal with. And it was so apparently clear in the time that we couldn't have access to childcare, how important it was. So if anyone you know, didn't think childcare was important, we saw brutally firsthand um, over the course of the last year how critical um, care for children and for families and support for families truly is. Um, and that's why I think it's important that we're here today to continue uh, our work to support um, children and families uh, in the General Assembly. And I just wanna say a few words of, um, of thanks to, the, um, to, of course, our host, Rachel. I always enjoy an opportunity to work with Rachel over the years and uh, look forward to more. 
And as well, of course, Leader McCaffrey, um, thank you so much for being a tremendous partner in government over in the Senate. And I know you mentioned several senators. Uh, Senator Cano will be speaking later, and I always enjoy working with her as well. And I really just want to highlight, as I always try to do on these, the, the role that Representative Grace Diaz has played in my legislative career. I've learned so much from Grace. She is a tremendous teacher. She's an inspiration. She is so helpful in, um, in guiding other legislators in following their lead and, and learning about issues that impact um, our families in, in the district and in the communities. So, you know, Rep Diaz, thank you again so much. I've learned so much from you over the years. I'll continue to learn from you and, and just hope to be able to be as great a, a champion uh, for families as, as you are. So, you know, with that, I'll just wrap up by saying that I just want to thank all the teachers and child care providers and early child care educators that are on today and your your work is is invaluable to everything that we do and i appreciate um the opportunity to, to address you all today thank you thank you leader and we are all huge fans of representative diaz as well so we uh, uh concur in those remarks and, and her great uh, leadership and mentorship now i'd like to turn it over to leanne barrett who's going to walk through the campaign's priorities I'm also doing in charge of slides. So uh, can you see my slides? Okay, great. Um, I am just gonna go over the campaign priorities really quickly and a shout out to everyone on the steering committee. These are um, priorities that we all work together on and um, have worked to um, make sure we can um, support them all equally. Um, so our legislative and budget priorities for 2021 include um, enacting strong state and federal revenue policies, which we need to maintain, expand, and improve essential programs that are a lifeline for babies, young children, and families. In particular, we support the Revenue for Rhode Island proposal and other equitable strategies to increase state and federal resources that will help families with young children. Um, we have an exciting bill, which um, Representative Diaz um, will be the sponsor of on the House side um, to pass the Rhode Island Child Care is Essential Act. So it's similar to the bill that we've been working on for a number of years. It's a little bit bigger this year, but to increase rates for the Child Care Assistance Program um, and make the, um, the temporary rates mm -hmm. permanent so we can promote children's access to high quality programs, help providers meet new minimum wage requirements, um, and make sure that safe, healthy, and high quality childcare options are available for working parents um, and for children to learn and grow. Um, third, we wanna pass the Rhode Island Early Educator Investment Act, which is sponsored by Senator Cano on the Senate side and Representative Casimiro on the House side. I know Julie Red Casimiro was unable to join us today, but she sends our best wishes. Um, and that bill will um, work on um, establishing goals for early educator wages. Early educators, almost all of whom are women and many are people of color, are among the lowest paid workers in the state. Child care, preschool, family home visiting, and early intervention programs struggle to recruit and retain excellent staff. We should ensure educators that have earned early childhood credentials and demonstrate effective practice are rewarded with increased wages that are comparable to similarly qualified K-12 educators. Um, oh, and, I, and the paid family leave program is fourth on here, which in our state is called the temporary caregivers insurance. We need to improve that to match national benchmarks by increasing wage replacement rates and extending the number of weeks. We need to improve the program so that all parents, especially lower wage earning parents who can't afford to pay their bills when they have the reduced income from our lower wage replacement rates. And we need to make sure they have adequate income to remain at home with newborns, adoptive and foster children for at least 12 weeks. Next, we want to make sure we cover community-based doula services through Medicaid and private health insurance. The um, mom we're gonna hear from next um, is, is the star of our doula advocacy video, and I do a shout out for Q Osorio, who is also on, and she's a leader in the doula community. Um, but we want to make sure that the state invests in building, supporting, and sustaining the doula workforce and infrastructure in the state as a strategy to reduce racial and economic disparities in maternal and child health outcomes. Next, 
Um, the, there is also a staffing crisis for the Rhode Island Early Intervention Program, which serves infants and toddlers with developmental delays and disabilities, and our network of voluntary family home visiting programs. The best way to help is to increase Medicaid rates and allocate adequate state funds as a Medicaid match so that we can reach more families with these very important prevention programs. Um, and uh, we want to maintain full state funding and children's access to RI Pre-K and Head Start. Both are programs that are high quality and help children um, be on track for school success. And last, um, as actually this is hopefully an early win for us, um, the legislature um, passed the um, affordable housing and um, early learning facilities bond question so they could be on a special election ballot. So on March 2nd, 2021, we wanna encourage everybody on the call to request their absentee ballot now and or not and or or <laughs> show up in person on March 2nd or there's going to be early voting I believe starting February 10th to support question three and question five. Um, we know that um, the high cost of housing and the high cost of child care and early learning programs are the two biggest um, challenges for families with young children and if we can um, get these questions through there will be more resources to help improve um, access to affordable housing and to make sure the early learning program facilities including family child care homes can make needed improvements to their buildings um, okay so that's a basic overview oops and um, oops oh this is sorry <laughs> hard to do my slides and also talk the um, this is our schedule so this is our kickoff event today and we have a tentative set of dates and times we're aiming for Wednesdays at one o'clock and some of these may change but we we don't have time to talk about everything in depth today but we're going to do a deep, deeper dive and highlight um, legislative sponsors and champions at each of these events so the next event we have coming up will be on Wednesday February 10th which is about the bond questions, vote yes on question three and question five. And you can see we have um, a series of events planned culminating with our Strolling Thunder Family Rally, the 10th anniversary of, of the Rhode Island Child Care Day and our annual Early Childhood Advocacy Day. Those, those um, plans are still in progress. Osmary Rodriguez Barker is on the call. You can see her too. And um, she's, um, she's our leader on Strolling Thunder and very involved in all of the planning on that. So thank you for that. And I will stop sharing so we can go to the next um, item on the agenda. Great, thank you, Leanne. And I just wanna recognize Representative Liana Kassar in the house who will be sponsoring the paid leave legislation as well as um, the sponsors, um, Cano and Diaz, who are sponsoring the Child Care is Essential and the Rhode Island Early Education Investment Act. Now I'm proud to welcome a new mom to the microphone who we are so pleased to have with us today. Um, she has a four month old and has taken the time in addition to going back to work to speak with us. So thank you, um, uh, Will Maris Soto Ramos. She is the mom of a beautiful new girl, new baby girl, and also the star in our video that we will be showing you. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with us today. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and, and I'm very excited for this opportunity and to speak a little bit more. Um, as Rachel said, my name is Will Morris. Um, I don't know if actually if I'm frozen. Uh oh. No, you're okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I froze a bit on my screen. Um, so, my name is Wilmaris. I live in Pawtucket with my partner, Stephen, and our rainbow baby girl. Her name is Amadi, um, and she was born October 4th of this year. Uh, this is our first living baby, and we have faced many challenges getting to this point. Um, experiencing two consecutive second trimester losses left me and my partner feeling as if we could never have a healthy and full-term pregnancy. At the time, I did not have the support I needed, and after getting pregnant for the third time during a pandemic, I knew I needed a holistic team to care for me and my new pregnancy. I found a doula, a mentor who was also here, Q, um, changed my providers and moved hospitals to ensure that I would be taken care of, of the way that I needed to be. After giving birth to my first living child, 
I, although I was overjoyed and in disbelief that she was here and healthy, I was still so compounded by the grief of my previous losses. Um, and postpartum depression began to affect me significantly. My OB was attuned to my needs and was concerned. Therefore, he referred me to the day hospital for their partial day program for mothers experiencing postpartum depression and anxiety. Between this program, check-ins with my OB and the support of my doula, family, and friends, I'm now feeling much better and have gained essential tools that continue to help me each day. Becoming a mother helped me turn me into an advocate. One of the ways I'm using my experience is to create a, to create a better place for my baby to grow up in and to make the world a better place for other moms and dads is by starting my own private practice to support other parents who have lost babies. More importantly, I am a proud supporter of the right from the start policy agenda. In particular, I believe strongly that General Assembly leaders should take the steps needed to require health insurance and Medicaid coverage of community-based doula services for pregnant and postpartum mothers in need of such support. As you will soon see when Leanne plays the video for all of you, I appear in the Right from the Start advocacy video with my doula, Emerald Ortiz. We hope to make the video to encourage General Assembly members to pass the legislation that would cover doula services for all moms in the state. Doulas are advocates for moms and they help you learn to advocate for yourself and your baby. They help you with childbirth, including preparation and recovery, which is extremely important and without my doula, sorry, I would not have the empowering and peaceful birthing experience that I did. Doulas work alongside medical professionals and they focus on supporting the mom and her family holistically. In fact, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists um, say that working with a doula is one of the most effective strategies to improve labor and birth outcomes. Doulas are also a very important strategy to help our country address these racial disparities in maternal and infant um, mortality rates and health. As we know, black women are four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes in the U.S. than white women. Doulas help moms have healthier births. They also improve breastfeeding rates and reduce maternal depression. Health insurance coverage for doula services will allow all pregnant people in, the, in Rhode Island who want a doula to have access to one. Now, I also want to say that there are many other items in the Right from the Start campaign list that are also very important. I specifically want to say that we need to expand our, our state's paid family leave program for the Temporary Caregivers Insurance, or TCI, to provide more weeks at home with new baby and to increase the amount of money families receive when they're on paid leave, especially if a mother needs additional time because she's experiencing something like I did, like postpartum depression. Families cannot afford to take the leave if they don't have enough replacement income. So if you're making $14 an hour, you cannot survive on 60% of that to stay home with your new baby. It's nearly impossible. So people go back to work way too early before they're ready and before their baby is ready. We know that babies need at least 12 weeks at home with their parents to get off to a good start. And many experts recommend more weeks at home. Both Connecticut and Mass Massachusetts offer 12 weeks for both parents and Rhode Island is only offering four, four weeks. We need to pass legislation in our state to improve the temporary caregiver insurance program. And lastly, I'm so excited to see that the Right from the Start campaign is working to improve family access to high quality child care, Head Start, and Pre-K. I know that babies start learning at birth and most parents need to work long hours, like I do. So we need to make sure childcare early learning programs have the funding they need to provide the quality services and to, to recruit and retain excellent early child educators so that parents can afford to have full access to these benefits. Uh, thank you so much everyone for attending today and I urge you to support these priorities. They're not only important to me as a new mom and as a new parent, but to other people in our state. So please, I urge you to support. Um, and now Leanne will play um, the video. Thank you.
I've had two previous pregnancies that ended in losses and so for me it was really important that this third pregnancy was just different. I wanted to feel like I was supported and um, just have a team behind me and so I really wanted to seek out a doula for my third pregnancy. She was there not only helping me with like my contractions, helping me breathe through everything, she was affirming me and she was also supporting like my partner so if he needed to take a rest like she'll take over. It was just like a whole support system really. Doulas are well prepared and experienced in understanding the emotional ups and downs that moms may feel during their pregnancy and particularly knowledgeable about the birthing experience. So they're not the person that delivers the baby, but they're the person that holds the mom's hand during this experience and supports her to do what she needs to do to get through the delivery and labor in a healthy kind of way. And then supports the mother after the baby is born in developing her relationship with her baby. As a doula, we doula the family. You know, we're not just for our moms or our dads. Um, we're, we're for the family unit. We're not medical staff. We don't do medical work. We're more of the digging into the emotional feeling of it and then encouraging you to advocate for yourself back to your provider. We really want you to have a relationship with your provider because that is the person who's taking care of your physiological being, you and your child. One of the things about um, black maternal health here is black moms die three to four times likely than our white counterparts. And so having a doula who can say, not only do I see you, but I see myself in you and I want you to see yourself in me, it really makes a difference during that pregnancy journey. As a doula, you are attentive to that one family in that one moment. And that takes a lot of work, a lot of energy, and always researching, right? Because Imagine if it's a family that you're not familiar with their culture. You know, you have to research the culture, learn their culture, engage with them. And, and so a lot of work goes into being able to support a family, especially with like certifications and trainings. Most trainings for you to be fully certified, it takes about two years. They're out in the field, they're taking classes, they're going to breastfeeding classes, they're going to childbirth classes, they're teaching childbirth curriculums. It's a lot of work. One of the things I love about being a doula is that I was able to be there during some of the most beautiful moments in people's lives. And it is always an honor and a gift to be invited to someone else's journey. Um, and I never take that for granted. Wow, what a beautiful video. Thank you so much, Will Maris and Q and um, others who were a part of that, making that video. I think short stories like that just tell a thousand words, and we really appreciate you, you doing that. Now I'd like to turn the mic over to two children's champions um, in our legislature. I'm going to introduce them and then ask them to speak. First, Representative Grace Diaz, which, as Leader um, Blazajewski mentioned, is just a real champion for children and has been for many years. Representative Diaz uh, has represented the people of District 11 in Providence since 2004. She's also the Democratic Caucus Chair and a member of both the House Committee on Finance and to all of us, most of us on this call, is the Chairwoman of the Legislative Commission on Child Care in Rhode Island. She's also the proud sponsor of the Child Care is Essential Act, which we will talk about today. And certainly, Reb Diaz is no stranger to mothering. She has five children and six grandchildren, um, and we really appreciate all of her work on behalf of all children in Rhode Island. And next, we'll have Senator, Senator Sandra Cano. 
Sandra is a state senator from Pawtucket, District 8, and also is a new mom, although I think her sweet little baby, who you can see on the screen, Ariana, is now about one. Um, Sarah Cano is the chair of the Senate Education Committee and also sponsors the right um, of the right from the start agenda, the, the bill that is called the Early Education Investment Act, um, which studies ways to raise wages for our early educator workforce. So, Representative Diaz. Thank you, um, Rachel. It was a nice introduction. I appreciate a lot. And uh, I appreciate everybody in this call. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak today. And before I, I share with all of you my remark, I would like to thank to uh, Democratic leader Christopher Blajewski, who I admire and respect a lot. Thank you for your friendship and more for working together for children in Rhode Island. Since day one, we pair we partner in the house and working together in the same um, goal. And I would like to also to thank to Senator McCaffrey. He's a real champion. I love to see you in the floor reading book with the kids. It's really inspiring. And it shows that you have a lot of love for children. I appreciate a lot. Also in the house, um, I'm pleased to uh, thank you to Reb Liana Casal. She's ready to work and be champion of this issue, which is so important. And I'm so pleased to see Mary Ann Charcross be elected again and working together. Child care for her is the uh, blood strain in her body. So she's doing day one, day out, all the time, and I appreciate that. And I would like to thank to every single one of my child care commission members. They are amazing, especially Leanne and Rachel, who keep me straight, informed, and working hard. And thank you to Kids Count, amazing organization that always in the front line to working and uh, looking for the best for the children in Rhode Island. So today I want to again say thank you for um, allowing me to be part of the right from the STAR initiative, which is something that Rachel and Leanne are working for many years now. And as a former child care provider and the chairwoman of the Permanent Legislative Commission on Child Care, I am familiar with the tremendous challenge that face us today. So much has been put on hold because of COVID, we know that, but the needs of the state's children persist. They are there all the time. And with the pandemic, it is more important than ever to maintain the funding that has gone toward supporting this, those programs. With an economic future has a tenuous abyss, many families are going to be faced with the problem of finding adequate child care for their children. Parents need safe, affordable, high quality child care for their children so they can keep society running and our economy functioning. We need affordable housing, which, is, which goes hand in hand with affordable child care. The people of Rhode Island will be voting in both these things in an oncoming referendum. The early childhood educa education workforce is severely underpaid for their expertise. The average early educator earns $12 and 12 cents per hour one of the lowest paid jobs in, in the U.S., even though many educators have a college degree. For years, I have advocated for quality child care and early learning and the impact these educators have on our youngest citizens is one that will follow them throughout their lives. This year, I'm sponsoring a, a landmark piece of legislation that was mentioned a few times, the Rhode Island Child Care is Essential Act. This bill will make the temporary rate increase for child care assistance program permanent. This is need to ensure that low-income families can access a wide range of quality child care options in the state. My bill will also cap 
co-payment for the child care assistance program at 7% of family income, the federal guideline for family affordability. As the COVID-19 crisis bears down hard in our state, harder than any hurricane even has, the decisions we make about early learning will have ramification for generations. I'm glad that we know the impact of that and we're working in that direction. We need policies and programs that help families with youngest children. It is necessary for proper childhood development. It is necessary for a strong economy and it's necessary for the public health. If we invest now, we helping Rhode Islanders weather this storm and will come out strong on the other side. Thank you for joining us in this cause which is just investing in better future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Diaz. And now, as she's being handed the baby, Senator Cano. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I didn't say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, it's great to be here today to once again support the Right from the Star agenda to ensure that all Rhode Island kids get off to a right start in life. Um, for me, as you know, it's very special, but before I start my remarks, I really want to say thank you um, to Little McCaffrey, to Little Blazewski that um, really have great remarks earlier today. Also, my colleagues in the Senate, um, Senator Mori, Senator Valverde, Senator DiMario that are here today with us. Um, and all my colleagues in the house as well. Thank you for being such great supporters of this amazing initiative. For me, it's a special. Why do I support this initiative? It's pretty simple. As you all know her, her name is Ariana Halel, and I am committed to do everything I can to ensure that Ariana and every Rhode Island kid get off to a great start in life with the support that they need to learn and thrive. This is the second year we have gathered to support the Right from the Star agenda. But we all know things are very different this year due to the health and economic impacts created by the COVID pandemic. From the health of our kids and families to the economic impacts of reducing hours and lost jobs, COVID-19 has been an incredible challenge, a challenge that has exposed just how important it is that we invest in programs and policies like the Right from the Star Agenda that sets our kids and families up for success so they can get through this pandemic and emerge even stronger when it's over. One of those critical investments is investing in Rhode Island's child care infrastructure. To put a simple Without access to high quality care, affordable child care options, Rhode Island families won't be able to get back to work and our kids won't have the access to the early learning programs that they deserve. According to a recent Washington University National Survey, 24% of families with children lost a job or income during the pandemic due to the lack of child care with Hispanics and low-income households being particularly hard hit. I have been a person that have noticed that. My constituents call me all the time because this is their priority. I have seen this firsthand not only in my community of Pataque and nearby in Central Falls, which had been hit hard by COVID-19, but also many of those constituents that I spoke to you about have had to cut back words um, hours to help take care of their children. As a working mom, I know this is a struggle myself. And I have been fortunate to have a childcare option for Ariana. I have to say that during this pandemic, I have the fortunate to have my parents supporting me with that. Um, that means that, you know, other, other parents don't have that luxury, right? That don't have that support right there. But I know that many families 
I know this lock don't have this lock, and that's why we must continue to invest in our ch child care infrastructure. That means ensuring that our child care providers have the resources to pay for their bills, including covering wage of a staff during repeated quarantines that require staff and children to stay home and sometimes require temporary classrooms or even programs closures. It is also means paying our early childhood educators the worthy wages that they deserve. These workers, almost all of whom are women and many are people of color, are literally some of our kids' first teachers, yet they make less than $13 per hour, well below the same median wage of about 20 per hour and significantly less than kindergarten teachers who have an average annual salary of $65,530. We need to make early education a meaningful career pathway with professional development and growth opportunities, and that means working to raise their pay. That is why I am once again sponsoring legislation directing the state agency the mandate um, and manage early childhood programs to work together through the children's cabinet to establish an early educators target wage scale. Rhode Island early educators have a step up during COVID-19, helping the majority of our child care providers remain open and helping providing our kids with learning opportunities during these difficult times. Now it's time that we step up for them and help develop the plan so that they can get the worldly wages they deserve. I'm so looking forward to working with all of you. I also want to give a shout out to the sponsor in the house, Representative Casimiro. She has been a champion as well. She, I'm sorry that she couldn't make it, but uh, we love her and we are really thankful also for her support in the house. And I look forward to working with all of you to get this legislation passed and to support the right from the start agenda. Lastly, I also want to give a shout out to Wilmari Soto. It's because of people like her that we do the work that we do. She is a Pawtucket Pride um, resident, and um, I also know her. I saw her last when um, she came to vote in election day with Steve, her, um, her partner. And I just want to say congratulations to your baby girl. We celebrate you. We wish you luck, and we really love you. So thank you so much for being brave and speaking um, the truth about how much need we have um, as, a, as mothers and, and how much work we have in the state to do. So um, thank you so much. And Representative Diaz, thank you so much for your leadership. And we're here to do this together. Si se puede. Adelante. Thank you. <laughs> Well, awesome. You'll see a lot of people clapping. Thank you so much, Senator Cano. Um, Ariana is certainly adorable, and your words are very true, passionate, and so appreciated, as is your leadership. So now for the question of how you can get involved. I think I put in the chat a link to our website, but if not, it is www.rightfromthestartri.org. And on our website, you can find more information about the campaign, about the pieces of legislation we talked about today. We'll post them when they are um, posted on the General Assembly's website so you can see both the legislation itself, who the sponsors are, and um, there are also ways that folks can um, uh, contact their legislators directly from that page. We'd also encourage you to go to our social media sites and learn more about our upcoming events. The next one is two weeks from today, as Leanne mentioned, on February 10th, which will be a deeper dive into the Early Learning Facilities Bond. And with that, I'd like to thank all of our elected officials and panelists who um, were on with us today. A huge thank you again to leaders McCaffrey and Blazajewski, and to Representative Diaz and Sarah Cano, as well um, as, as uh, Will Maris, Soto Ramo, uh, Ramos, excuse me, um, who really was, was such a um, powerful speaker here today. So thanks everybody, and we look forward to seeing you in two weeks for our next conversation.